Hello, I'm Edward Tart, once a Catholic priest for five years in the 1960s, now an atheist, which means I find no credible evidence for the existence of any God. I am a math teacher. I have been that for 45 years. A good teacher knows his subject, is truthful, speaks unambiguously, says what he means, means what he says. With that in mind, I am going to list a bunch of things that the biblical Jesus reportedly said that are, to say the least, problematic. Number one. Jesus reportedly said that we should not plan for the future. That is obviously bad advice. Number two. He said that the end of the world would come in the lifetimes of his contemporaries. That did not happen, and to this day it has not happened. Number three. His followers can handle snakes without danger. Number four, his followers can drink poison without harm. Number five, to be his follower you must sell all your possessions. Number six, you must love others, but you must hate your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters. Number seven, if your hand or your eye would lead you into sin, Cut off your hand, gouge out your eye. Jesus did not reportedly say anything about seeking counseling. Number eight. If you put away your wife and marry another, you are committing adultery. That means that Jesus forbids you to divorce and then marry someone else. Millions of Christians do not follow these reported words of Jesus. Number nine. You should not pray in public. All your prayers should be done by yourself in secret. That means that Jesus is forbidding you Christians to go to your church services. And you Catholics who on your church's orders must go to Sunday Mass or else go to hell, you must on Jesus' orders not go to Mass. Number ten. We must love our enemies and do good to those who persecute us. That means that on Jesus' orders, our nation must love the Taliban who want to destroy us, and we must stop opposing them. Number 11. You must eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. Here, Catholics insist that Jesus must be taken literally, while most non-Catholics insist that he must not be taken literally. Number 12. Whatever you ask for in prayer with faith, your request will be granted. I address this extravagant promise of Jesus in a video about prayer. Please watch it. A good teacher teaches by example. So, number 13. The biblical Jesus was a donkey thief. And number 14. The biblical Jesus was prejudiced and bigoted against people of other nations. Number 15. When a man brought his slave to Jesus, Jesus had an excellent opportunity to speak out against slavery. There is no record of his having done so. And number 16, Jesus' core message is, I have said all these things and have done all the deeds that have been reported. I am meek and humble of heart. I love you, but you must accept all of this or I will torture you forever in hell. Now, here are my conclusions. We do not have reliable evidence of what Jesus said and did. The Gospels were written many years later, based to a large extent on hearsay, with many inconsistencies, copied and translated over and over with many errors. So maybe Jesus never actually said these things. But if he did, he was most emphatically not a good teacher. Again, a good teacher says what he means and means what he says. On many occasions, the biblical Jesus was speaking in ignorance or he was lying. And because of the tremendous importance of his message, 
he was obliged to see to it that his message was clear and reliably and accurately transmitted to us. If, as Christians commonly believe, Jesus was God, he certainly could have done that, but he did not do that. I am an unbeliever for one simple reason, lack of credible evidence to support belief. If you are a Christian believer, you need evidence. Faith is not enough. Faith is not a virtue. And concerning these things that Jesus reportedly said, you have a lot of explaining to do, followed by much positive evidence that you need for yourself and to give to us. Your burden of supplying evidence is very heavy. Your claims of belief are big and serious. Big serious claims call for big serious persuasive evidence, and I don't think you have it. The burden of supplying evidence is on you, not on me, not on us atheists. To all of you, thank you for watching this video.